Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. This is going to be one of the most helpful videos that I maybe have ever done. Although saying that, I've done a lot of helpful videos. Come on, you all know it. No, but seriously, some of the most common questions that I get asked are going to be answered in this video. And it's really going to enable you to not only study, but to practice. So get excited, grab yourself a beverage, and uh, let's do this. All right, so... What do people ask me? They go, where can I get script? I want to practice my comic book drawing pages, but I don't know where to get professional script. It's a great question. Inkers will ask me, where do I get high res files of pencils to practice on? I don't know where to get high res scans of pencils to practice on. We're gonna answer that too. And then people will go, um, you know, what's good study material? Like, how, how do I study? I mean, I actually think even colorists could maybe benefit from this video. So it, it'll hit everyone. So one of the things that I've always told people in the past is, look, Google actually is your friend. And don't thumbs down the video because I'm giving you the most generic answer. But Google is actually really helpful. And there's other search engines. There's one that I use that's kind of yellow. I can't think of the, the name of it. But if you look up search engines like Google, image search engines like Google, there's there's one where you can find higher res files, like Google sort of has limited it now. Um, you can still get pretty large files, but these director's cuts and noir books that the companies do, uh, Marvel in particular does a series of director's cuts, and DC has jumped on the, um, not the bandwagon, but they do it too. And then there's a line of books that DC did called Noir, so with the Marvel books, as far as I've been able to tell, a lot of times the director's cuts are the d digital only, which isn't bad because the thing is, is you can print out any of this stuff. So let's get to it. I'm gonna show you how amazing this stuff is and how high quality, not only the scans are, but the art in general, it's gonna blow your mind. There's a fucking plane flying over my house. The second I start, oh, it's a helicopter. Fuck you, it's the cops. They're probably going to come arrest me for giving out such insanely kick-ass information. But right, so we're just going to start at the top of this. I opened a lot of stuff. So, okay, so this is Dark Days Director's Cut, and this is a DC one. So this is the prelude to metal. You can already see where I'm going with this. Look at this cover. It's got pencils. You can see the inks and the colors going down. But wait till we get inside, because you could use this as a sample page and practice your inks. You could do it digitally or you could print it out as a blue line. And I've done videos on how to create blue lines um, either in Clip Studio or, or in Photoshop. So you might want to search my channel for that or it, it could be on Patreon. I think it was, I, I did, I've done them on both. But uh, so this isn't Jim Lee stuff on the inside, but, but uh, I mean, look at the quality of this freaking scan. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. You could freaking throw this into clip studio turn it into a blue line and you've got something to practice on you know would you do this in black or would you do a little bit of rendering through here a little splattery do or keep it graphic you know um and then uh, we're just going to keep moving fast because i've got so much good stuff open so this is another page from that i don't know who this penciler is um off the top of my head uh, but anyway, um, there is some Jim Lee stuff in here too, uh, but I'm just kind of going in order of what I opened it. This could be Qbert. I'm not sure, but this, I mean, look, when I was doing my original samples to break into comics, I didn't have reproductions this good. I had like Xeroxes of Xeroxes of Xeroxes that probably have been kicked around through multiple sources. Um, and, uh, look, this is great, great shit. And, and they're out there. You can buy them online. You could, you know, <laughs> use other methods. Or if they're actually comic books, you could buy the comics themselves and scan it. I would just look for the digital files because it it cuts out the source of um, having to uh, scan it. You know what I mean? Remove that step. And, I mean, like I said, I can go like this and turn this into a blue line in like three seconds. Um, I save actions. Uh, turn a page blue. Let's see if this works. There, I've got a blue line, boom, like that. I throw this and, and save this as a PDF. And I, what I do is I size it. I would I would create a new template. Did I click new? No. I do um, 600 PPI and then 11 by 17. And then I would drop it into this. So I would take, uh, was this what I was doing? 
I'll just show you really fast. I like I said, this isn't about I go AX. And then just I would drop it in here and then transform it to the size so that it's on an eleven by seventeen template and high res and then I flatten it and save it as a PDF. And this thing is rocking, man. I this is almost exactly how I do my pages. Alright, so anyway. And in Clip Studio, people always like to tell me, you can press one button to make a blue line. Well, I just did it in Photoshop. So, boom. <laughs> All right, so here we go. All right, so let's, we're, we're going to move through these fast. I've got all kinds of stuff to show you in this video. I think this should be really exciting for you because, again, you know, uh, it's I'm telling you, it's a very, very common question that I get. I mean, look at this shit. You know how good a practice material this is? It's outstanding. I was going to do this as a Patreon only video, but I felt like um, my last video was was a little hard top. So this is Jim Lee. Dude, look at the, the resolution of this to practice on. Thanks, malware bites. I had to get malware bites. I surfed the web dirty and I decided that I needed some protection. <laughs> Now, it was like, the shit kept attaching to Chrome, and it was pissing me off, so I just was like, alright, I'm spending 30 bucks, I'm gonna get this, so it won't happen again. This would be so good to practice on. This would be good for me to practice on. Jim's, Jim's got some challenging bits to ink on, but, you know, this would even benefit a penciler, you know? So, anyone can get some use out of this, and when do you see the script stuff? So, again, just fantastic stuff to practice your inks on. So, and this is the other thing that I'm going to mention, because I don't know why people go from A to Z with this stuff. I wouldn't recommend selling prints of this stuff after you ink it. Don't try to monetize everything. People get so greedy with this stuff. It's like, if you, if you do these as samples... And then you run to a Comic Con and start trying to sell reproductions of it. You you might annoy someone or piss someone off. So just do it as practice. But I'd, I'll have people go, can I sell copies of it? And it's like, well, do you think that's a good idea if you're trying to break into comics to to sell other people's stuff? I mean, it's you know, you have to be cautious with it. You know. Everyone wants to create a, I call it a boutique business, but it's like, just do, get, get, get the educational value out of it, you know? Because that, what, what happened is, I saw it happen on DeviantArt years ago, is people started, there was an inker, I think, that was doing a bunch of Greg Capullo, um, Greg used to post his pencils huge, and in fact, we have some Capullo in here, um, but he would post these huge scans, about this size of his pencils on DeviantArt, and some guy started doing uh, inking copies of them and selling them on eBay, and, uh, you know, it. these guys will find out about this. It's their name. They search the internet, like, with their name, like, you know... I don't know. I don't personally do it. I, I can't even remember the last time I've actually like searched my own name. Um, but uh, pencilers do it. <laughs> Maybe it's just a, a penciler thing. But they're curious of what people are saying about them online. But also fans will narc on you. You know what I mean? Some will go, there's some guy on eBay selling ink copies of your stuff. So look at this. This would be so good to practice on. So just do them to learn, you know? Enjoy it. Put it up on your wall as a poster. And this would be the other thing that I would recommend because people uh, get very hesitant about like over practicing or, or uh, what I would call just practicing. <laughs> when you ink a piece like this and you high five yourself for finishing it and it looks so so, do it again. You know, maybe do a couple of pieces in between and then try to ink it again like a week or two later and then ink it again. Do it three times. You don't have to do it with every piece, but it's like one, I guarantee that each time you do it, it will get better and better. And you're not going to hurt yourself by, uh, by, by doing them multiple times unless you think you're so good that you have nothing to benefit from it. But people, because I'm offering you the opportunity to have a lot of different stuff to practice on. Um, there can be a lack of focus and sort of discipline involved in it. It's like, I, I do think that in some ways, so this is Dark Knight's Metal, and this will be Capullo. Um, and uh, you'll see with the Marvel books, they actually include the pencils, the inks, and the colors with no lettering. I mean, all three are incredible study devices. But here again, you've got a really fantastic opportunity to practice over a pencil that you might really, really admire. 
you know, you went, I've always wanted to ink a lizard in the desert drawn by Greg Capullo. Well, here's your opportunity to do that. And some very, very primitive um, little symbols. There's a great double page spread coming up in here. Um, but yeah, this will get you going. You try to try to ink some stuff like this and you'll realize how much of a badass Jonathan Glapian is as an inker. Because Capullo doesn't mess around. This stuff is this stuff is challenging. It's it, there's a lot of interpretation, even though it's it's pretty uh, defined. Um, you know, you give this to five different inkers, you're gonna get five very very different results, and uh, it's good practice. You know, it honestly is really really good practice. I mean. This should be very, very exciting in particular for inkers, but what a great study tool for pencilers because if you're sitting at home working on your pencils and you're trying to figure out like how tight do I need to draw, what, you know, um, what's my part of the job, it can be very confusing when you're looking at a page like this and you're a penciler, you just might look at this and go, I don't even know where to start. This all looks amazing to me, but I can't even find anything to ground what I'm about to do or attempt to do looking at this. There's lines everywhere. There's smoke and splatter and all these beautiful colors. And and I know that when you're a, a more, um, you know, not a beginner, but you know what I mean? Like in the earlier stages of learning, even something like this can be very confusing because the lighting on this is really drawing on top of this drawing. But it's, it's as you'll see as we get to these pieces where there's no... Um, uh, no no inks and no colors and the different steps you'll be able to see what what is actually put down by the penciler which is really important i mean look at how how loose this is it looks cool but i guarantee once it was inked it looked even better and um you know the other books that i would recommend if you can afford them those get expensive is the artist editions from idw and then also the gallery editions from um dc and i even think um graffiti Graffiti Graphics does them? Because I have the Frank Miller Sin City one, and that's graffiti, if I'm not mistaken. But those are good study guides because they're 11 by 7. You know, they're the full size of whatever the original artist drew it at. But look at this. Can you imagine trying to ink this? Like, were you going to put those lines as white inside the hair, or are you going to do it completely black? Decisions, decisions. Where do you see the scripts? There's scripts in these books. Not all of them have the scripts, but the Marvel... Uh, no, you know what? Uh, defi definitely the Marvel ones have scripts, which I think is really interesting because then the, on top of, of having access to the pencils, inks, and colors, uh, you can see the script and how the penciler interpret it. So you could do this little test to yourself where read the script first and don't look at the pencils and and do, do thumbnails of the page of how you would lay it out. You see what I'm saying is like... Read it so it's Batman is blasted by some sort of battering that starts to wrap him up. And then Aquaman is being, um, you know, attacked by this other thing. And we've got another guard. Like, how would you lay that out? What would be your layout? And then you compare it to what the pro did. And uh, it'll be a real eye opener for you. And it'll start to show you options and um, really kind of expand your sort of um, not only imagination, but your... your um, mental like library this is great there's a lot of panels holy cow one two three four five six seven oh it feels like so much more look at this this would take a long time to ink this to me looks like a two-day page but again you turn this little bad boy to blue bam you're ready to ink. Print that out, 600 PPI, or throw it into Clip Studio. You're off to the races, my friends. Fun, fun, fun. The This is unbelievable material to work over. I, I would have killed to have this opportunity when I was trying to break in. Look at this shit. Are you guys excited? Even if you're not an inker, you should be excited. <laughs> It's a shame that more people don't recommend this. I've never ever seen anyone recommend this as a as a like study or learning tool or or even practice, um, you know, like throw it in your your gym toolbox. 
It's unbelievable. That would be really, really cool to see how different people ink it. You know? Because it's all shaded in black. And what he wants is he wants all these lines that he put in here white. Easier to do digitally than traditionally, I'll tell you that, because you can sort of lower the opacity on your layer digitally and see what's going on. But uh, and this double page spread is coming up next. Why do you see this this next piece? That's great. So it's challenging stuff to ink too. Look at this. Are you excited? Are you fired up? Look, Barry Windsor Smith. I saw Sandra mention Barry Windsor Smith. She she misspelled his name. She spelled the Barry B E R R Y. <laughs> I don't think she ever followed his work, though, to be honest. I, she knows who he is, obviously, but uh, <laughs> it was funny. Oh, and, you know, this was really weird coincidence, too. But look at this. Isn't this amazing? Oh, my God. You could kiss three and a half days goodbye doing this. I'll tell you that right now. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. Dude, if you're an aspiring inker and you go for this, please send me a copy of it. You can direct message me on Instagram. Go for this. Someone go for this. I want to see what you can do. Someone's got it in them. <laughs> I, I think it'll be really fun. Look at that. A little white through there with the eraser. But uh, I, you know, I've said this before that there's a lot of professionals that follow my YouTube channel but never ever make a peep that they do. At Comic Cons, they'll tell me they do. They'll go, oh, I love your channel. I'm like, well, why don't you ever post or uh, comment? But uh, the day that I posted that thing about never give up, Todd McFarlane, about six hours later, posted. Uh, an inspirational thing and I thought that that was a very odd coincidence and I've done enough videos on Todd that I would think that again with the pencilers they're aware of what's going on about them online so it wouldn't surprise me if he knows that I do videos about him and that, that I'm you know I respect him tremendously so this is Steve McNiven let's focus on this so this is Steve McNiven or as I like to call him Steve Windsor Smith McNiven <laughs> now no just kidding um but uh this is great because this is the Marvel stuff where they show uh colors and inks and as we get into the Ryan Stegman um carnage stuff on Ryan's book they have the pencils inks colors and script but I think on this, Steve did the um, pencils and inks himself. So, And here's the script. But here, check this out. So he's on his knees in a pool of blood, holding his claws out in front of him. They're red hot, like a piece of iron that's been left in a forge. Logan is screaming at them, very intense. Veins standing out on his neck. It's like the end of a moment, a very brutal one, as if he's a cop who just lost his longtime partner on the force in a shootout. You know, emotion and pain and intensity. Also, those clothes are hot and probably hurt like hell. The environment, what you can see of it is cave-like, a cavern, Logan. So you get all this information. And like I said, I would recommend, if you're a penciler, give this a shot. Lay this thing out. Don't focus so much on what Steve did initially. Look at this. Soak it in. Visualize it. Maybe even let it stew overnight, you know? Just, just read it and go, okay, I'm going to try to figure out how to lay this out and start picturing the scene in your head and see if you can rotate it. And you can, is the shot going to be uh, like a worm's eye view, like where Wolver you're kind of looking up at Wolverine? I think that that would be pretty interesting. Or maybe we're looking down at Wolverine. You know, it's like this very um, vulnerable moment. So we're above him, like looming over him. Or maybe it's more of a straight on shot, you know, whatever you want to do. And then when you see what Steve did, it's going to be, it, it will have a level of usefulness to you that um, I think would be pretty exciting. So um, more script. I just wanted to show the example of, of how cool this is, how helpful this will be for everyone. More script. I just opened a few pages. So this video is getting long, so we'll kind of move through this fast. But anyway, but yeah, they, they, they post the full script and the Stegman one has it too. So... And then here's the shot. So maybe there was a second panel. I didn't read the whole page, but you know, this is what this is Steve's interpretation. So we don't really see that he's in a cavern, to be honest. Like there's no indication to me that he's in a cavern. So stuff like that is interesting to um, take note of. Is what does the penciler focus on? What do they omit? Ultimately, it was interesting is Trevor Scott said this to me one time, uh, and he was. Trevor is kind of known for being an inker, but he penciled a lot of books. He worked on Death Bowl for many years, and he did a book called, I think, Black Sun that he wrote and, and drew for Wildstorm. But um, Trevor got script from someone one day. I think he was working on maybe 
God, what was it? Catwoman or something? And uh, he was like, the writer is telling me too much what to draw. And he didn't like it. And so he would he would just sort of dismiss things that it's like, it's his job to come up with the imagery, not the writer's job. It's an interesting kind of dance between the two. It's like you're collaborating, but at the same time, and I know Capullo called Scott Snyder out on that, not called him out, but but uh, I remember at one point, Greg Capullo had mentioned something, the fact that Scott would try to over sort of emphasize what image he wanted exactly. And Greg's like, listen, Sonny, I'm the artist. You better back off. You've seen my Greg Capullo guns. So anyway, really great stuff. I mean, it's, it's, uh, Steve always does terrific looking work, and I think that the Barry Windsor Smith thing seems to work for him pretty well. So it's it's cool to see, you know. This is nice. This is really really good. And again, you've got the script for all this, so you could see what uh, what exactly he did and how it would translate. Man, it's great. I've always theorized that that Steve uses um, some sort of poser program in his work. I don't know that for a fact, but I've I've suspected it for probably over 10 years i think he uses it less now but i've I, it looks like he uses 3d programs to sort of set up his shots not as much on this but uh i don't know if that's accurate or not but i've i've, I've sensed it adi granov too is another one that i think um uses uh 3d models but who knows i could be wrong Like I said, this stuff doesn't look like it as much. I think he's he's he uses it sparingly. If 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 uh, it could be just kind of a previs tool for him. It'd be interesting if he never did. I I would be very surprised. Honestly, he's never mentioned it online, as I don't think Granov has either. Granov definitely uses three D models too, though. I think. Who knows? Okay, so... Alright. I'm moving fast just because I want to show you the absolute carnage stuff. Because I think this is this is sort of the culmination of it all. So, this is the cover of the book. But yeah, you want to get the director's cut of this. This one, for sure, is only a digital. So, um, you wouldn't be able to find this in comic book form. But again, I don't think it's that bad. Because this is a study tool or a practice tool. You're going to hit a lot of what you want. So, script... You've got oh, more script. <laughs> more script. When I opened them, I was like thinking maybe I would read more of it. But anyway, so, but anyway, it's the full script for the book. Okay, so here we go. So we get his pencils, which are great. They're so freaking cool. And, uh, you know, a great study tool, a great opportunity for an inker to practice and try something that's at such a high professional level and then on top of it they give you the gift of the inks incredible and you get the colors with no lettering so if you're a colorist you finally can really look at a page and soak it in and just look at the cuts and the textures and stuff that he uses it's incredible so freaking cool. I would have killed for this stuff. Learning. I'm still learning, but you know what I'm saying. Like, But yeah, I, I have never seen anyone recommend this stuff. Ever. So I'm going to do it and help you guys out. Braywood Smith. Everyone loves him. That's nice. I actually did about an hour long video going through this director's cut about three or four months ago on my Patreon. So if you're a Patreon person or someone interested in Patreon, I went through and, and went over this whole director's cut. It was awesome. I did it honestly for myself, just thinking aloud, because I didn't know his work real well. I mean, I, I was aware of him, but not um, to the level that I wanted to be. And so sometimes I do sort of selfish uh book reviews where it's like you can kind of kill two birds with one stone you know you get a look at it but you also can kind of like think aloud which is basically what this video is too so anyway we'll start wrapping this up but yeah i hope that this is inspiring for you gets you excited and uh gives you some opportunities to learn or practice you know 
That's what it's about. Sharing information, getting people on point, and uh, making comic books way more kick-ass. Look at this. You know how hard this would be to ink? How much work all this is? I would have to hire an assistant to fill in the blacks. This would kill me to do page after page of this, especially on a tight deadline. You'd have to have someone filling in blacks for you, or you would spend literally, you would have really long days. Filling in blacks is quite easy, though. I mean, it's just basically if you can color in the lines, but it definitely helps. He broke this stuff up quite a bit. But again, you know, I mean, that's what's cool about being able to see the pencils to the inks, is you can really see how this, this, anchor handled the work and um and then you can see what the colors brought to it it's all whim look at the colors so good i remember just ooing and aahing about the colors the whole time we were looking at this book it's just fantastic stuff really really killer It's interesting, right? It's nice inks. He does his lines long like I do. Finch likes the stubbier lines. But I I don't mine aren't this narrow though. Like I would have it a little bit more of a taper, but uh some similarities of how I throw some of these lines. A little bit. A little bit. Well I hope that this was fun and, and somewhat educational. I really do. I didn't know I was going to do this video today. I always say that. A lot of this stuff is very spontaneous. I was uh, I was making breakfast, and it came to me in a flash of inspiration. <laughs> it did, though, actually. It's funny. It's like I was trying... I was going to do an inking video for our Patreon, but I posted one last night, and it felt a little redundant. It's like there's a law of diminishing returns with everything. It's like if you post an inking video one day, and then you do another one the next day, it'll get less views, and just, you know what I mean? People kind of like... They want variety. So here's variety. There's a lot of these. You know, look online and, and just search for um, Director's Cut, and then also, like I said, the Noir books, N-O-I-R... Um, not, well, there's, there was a line of books from Marvel called Noir that aren't what I'm talking about, but DC did Noir books that are actually black and white versions of, um, I think it's mostly Batman stuff, but, um, they're cool. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, if you want to study the work without, um, color, uh, it'll definitely get you there, but the director's cuts are what you want for a script, possibly pencils, inks, and colors that are un, um, encumbered by, uh, things i love that marvel does it without the word balloons i mean to me I, I am not a huge fan of um having the word balloons on the director's cuts i like having the script but i don't like the lettering on the board although i mean it does help you in in as much as being able to think about the space for word balloons that's something that i need to remind myself about when i do um reviews and critiques of people's sequentials is to make sure that they're leaving room for um dialogue and stuff you do want little dead areas based on how much um verbiage is going to be going on on your pages look at that it's so good so it's definitely something to, to take into consideration it's like you don't want to fill a panel like this where there's no room for word balloons if there's you know a lot of uh stuff that needs to be said if this is a rant by this guy and he's got three word balloons you're not going to want to shove them in a little panel like this so all right, have a great day. I love you all. Thank you so much for the support on the last video. It was, you know, obviously done, you know, to more help you, all of you. But uh, it was nice to see such a good reaction to it and a lot of great posts. And look, I mean, honestly, there was a lot of people that were saying not only on, on YouTube, but I was getting direct messages on Instagram and comments on Instagram that there were a lot of people that are on the fence right now and thinking about giving up. And they were saying it was just what they needed to hear. So... I think that's great. It just feels like like as things are settling down and I guess slowly getting back to normal, we've all been pulled out of our comfort zone to some degree. And it's just challenging, you know? Like like it's 
we were all locked down and then the world went completely insane and you know people have lost their jobs or they're not working as much and it just everything got really weird and if you're a sensitive person then even if it didn't affect you directly it bums you out to see other people hurting you know it's just one of those things so everybody kind of needs to sort of like heal together <laughs> so all right have a great day i hope that this was fun to check out and um yeah get practicing you got a lot you got a lot a lot to look at there's tons of these there's a bunch of hulk ones um with different artists too so all right have a great one bye